Good morning. Welcome to Lovely Lane Chapel. We're glad that you've chosen to worship here uh, with us this morning. My name's Wayne Raz. I'm the pastor here at Upworth by the Sea. And I think we're pretty much all locals or kind of regulars, aren't we, today? Yeah. So uh, we're glad to have everyone together. Um, this is from Psalm 146, and we just heard, go tell it on the mountain. But Psalm 146 says, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Amen to that. Let us go to God in prayer. O Lord, thank you for bringing us here this morning. Thank you that you are present with us for where two or three are gathered in your name. There you will be also. We ask for your Holy Spirit to fill us and to fill this chapel that we may worship you in spirit and truth. Focus our hearts and our minds solely on you that everything that is done will be to glorify your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we come with different joys and concerns and we take a moment in silence to lift these up to you. Lord, hear our prayers. Minister in each soul and circumstance according to your will. Bring healing, hope, reconciliation, redemption, love. And most of all, may we celebrate the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, once again as we anticipate that Christmas morning. And finally, with Chris, uh, confidence of children of God, we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you stand as uh, you're able as we sing our congregational hymn, number 246, Joy to the World, number 246. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior turn and greet everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome. Good morning, Jamie. How are you? Thank you. You may be seated. Oh, I forgot the Apostles' Creed. Let's stand again. As we uh, affirm our faith with the historic confession, the Apostles' Creed found on page 881 of your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay, now you can be seated. <laughs> we, we, we're just doing our workout this morning. Would our ushers please come forward? <clears throat> Lord, you have blessed us with so many things, and now we can return a portion to you for the work of your kingdom. So, Lord, bless, multiply, and receive these gifts. May they be given with glad and joyful hearts that we can see the miracle of Christmas at work in our community and in our world through the ministries of Lovely Lane Chapel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Well, we're now in our third Sunday of Advent. You remember the first week it was, Come, let us go to the mountain. And we talked about the peace, and they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. And last week, we talked about the wolf will lie down with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, and the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. And today we want to talk about the joy of Christmas. Isaiah 35 proclaimed this, verses 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. And it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy in singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble needs, knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance and will recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes, and the highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. They shall not be found there. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast come upon it. But the redeemed shall walk here, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return, and come with singing to Zion. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, and they shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Let us pray. Oh God, no one needs to hear my words, but Lord, we need to hear you speak. We need a, a real and personal encounter with the living, resurrected Lord today. That we may experience the true joy that can come only from you. The everlasting joy that shall be upon our heads that we shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sigh shall flee away. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, chapter 35 in Isaiah paints this wonderful picture of, of unrestrained joy and unending blessing for the people of Zion. It's a, a look to the future age where Christ will come and he will come again in glory. It's the end time will be like the beginning. The new age, the messianic age, will reflect the earliest age. Just as there was chaos in the water and God stilled them and formed creation, God is going to come and calm the waters and the chaos of our world once again. And it will give way to the creative blessing that God intends so the devastation of the final day will give way to the extraordinary blessings of the new age. And few passages communicate this futuristic perspective more so than chapter 35 of Isaiah. Those who are weak will be saved and strengthened. Miraculous healings will occur. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the lame will walk, and the mute will speak. 
and my knees will be healed. It will be a sign that the new age is dawn, that the Messiah has returned, and he will reign in peace and truth and love and glory. And we can all return home to what God intends. As is stated in verse 10, the ransomed of the Lord, that's us, shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Chapter 35 of Isaiah is considered a transitional chapter in the book of Isaiah. Most scholars believe that they were probably three different authors of Isaiah. And this chapter is a transition between first Isaiah and second Isaiah. First Isaiah was largely a warning to the people of Israel. And this starts to speak about what comes after the judgment. That God will return in glory and is going to lead the people back into relationship and will restore creation to its intended order. You know, it's a it's it's a, a perspective that is quite intriguing to me now as, as we face many of the things that we face in in the world today. Economic policies that are unsustainable will be turned into policies that are enduring forever. The road that leads to destruction will be turned into a path to glory. And Isaiah writing this chapter in the midst of the exile of Israel is a call to that hope. It's the call to the joy. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. You know, I, I, I think sometimes that we're hardly, or I'm hardly the best ambassador of God's grace and hope and, and joy. Hardly the best witness to comfort and joy. And, and yet, I and, and we are what God has to work with. We're, we're his messengers here on earth. We are the sign that the journey home has begun. We are witnesses to God with us, Emmanuel. We are the light in the darkness, announcing to any and all that the season of joy and light, of peace and goodwill is here. And we say to those who are fearful, be strong, fear not. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. You know, all of us have experienced wilderness times, haven't we? In our own lives and in our families. Times where disease and conflict and trauma were pervasive and, and even overwhelming. Seasons of, of days and months, even years in the proverbial desert. You've heard me talk about our family's experience and, and our own personal testimony of how we dealt with many years of, in the wilderness with the health of our children. And at times it seemed hopeless and it seemed like we would be in the desert forever. And I know that you and your family have gone through desert times as well. I know that you have dealt with disease and affliction, addiction, and the difficulties and challenges of life. And I don't have to recount them to you today because you know, don't you? But God delivered our family from the wilderness. 
It provided healing and restoration of relationships and redemption. Jesus, you know what the name means? He saves. Jesus. Jesus saved our family and brought peace and hope and joy back. And I know that he's done it in your situations, in your circumstances, and even in your families too. That when things seemed hopeless, Jesus was what we held on to. And like our family, you have experienced deliverance and healing and restoration of relationships ravaged by disease and circumstances. And so now every time I talk with my children, every time that I see them, every time that we think about them, there's overwhelming joy in understanding what we've been through and where God has brought us to now. Psalm 30 verse 5 says, Though sorrow may last for the night, joy comes in the morning. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. We are to proclaim the joy which will come. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. If you or your families are in the wilderness today, there is hope. His name is Jesus. Jesus, he saves, and we are here to proclaim the good news. And if you've already been delivered from the wilderness, give thanks and share the joy with others. For there is hope, though sorrow may last for the night, joy comes in the morning. So our invitation this morning for those who may be experiencing wilderness times, may you be encouraged and hear the good news that there is a way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And his name is Jesus. And he saves. And he will bring you to that joy in his time. And we are here with you to encourage and be present with you. And for those of us who have been delivered through those wilderness times, let us share that joy with others that they may have a real 